Yasas, everyone, and welcome to a new Greek Ancestry webinar. It's been a while since our last webinar back in June, uh, and I have to admit that I really missed this whole idea. So here we are again with a new webinar. Now, um, between April and June, we did seven webinars. We discussed many different topics and uh, like different types of Greek genealogy records you can use in your research. And the last webinar, it was a case study. I wanted to show you all how different types of records come together and complement each other. Now, all these webinars are available on YouTube, so in case you have missed one or you want to watch it again, uh, just visit our YouTube channel, Greek Ancestry on YouTube. Okay, so summer starts and uh, like one week after the last webinar, I visited Sparta and I met the bishop there and we had an agreement about further digitization of the Metropolis's archives. Every time I go to Sparta, I think this is the last time, you know, that I got it all. Uh, but every time I return, it proves that it was not enough and there's much more to, to work on. So this time, I digitized parish voter lists. This is a very big and very important collection. It's very interesting. It includes about 36,000 records for about 100 villages of Laconia. In fact, this is all of Laconia except for the area of Mani, which does not belong to the metropolis of Sparta. Uh, so this collection has records which extend from 1912 to 1935, late 1930s, but most of the records are from the 20s and 30s. Now, what is a parish photo list? Until 1967, priests in Greece were elected and compensated by the local parishes. This is similar to what happens today in the United States and the Greek Orthodox Church there. So every time a new priest was needed, they would create um, a voter list of all those parishioners eligible to vote. Those, those were primarily men, uh, but we also find some women, occasionally widows or um, adult, orphan, unmarried uh, women who lived, you know, uh, on their own. Many conditions had to be met for a woman to, to be able to vote back then, even for a priest. So they would make this uh, parish voter list and they would include the, the voter's surname, given name, his or her father's name, age, sometimes the occupation. But personally, what I find most interesting are the little side notes, um, which can sometimes be found on the records. You can see it uh, on this record here on the right. Uh, for example, on, on line 35, it says Duvris Georgius, son of Panagiotis, 24 year, years old, Stratiotis, a soldier. And the guy right below, it says America. So that guy was an immigrant to the United States at that point. So these records will give you, you know, plenty of information, but also information that you cannot find elsewhere. So they are very, very interesting. And the reason why they included all this additional information, like soldier, America, is because they were created at a local level, so they were of local interest. The locals wanted to know if this guy lives abroad at the moment, because this means he's not going to vote, right? Um, so after the the voter list was created, you know, they would put uh, a notice on the local church's front door saying that, uh, you know, uh, an election is coming up, informing the parishioners. And then on election date, um, they would take little pieces of paper 
and would write their name or their voter list number and then the name of their favorite candid priest. And guess what? We do have the ballots. We have the actual votes written by people. You can see an example here in the in the middle, those little pieces of paper. Um, so, you know, you can actually find out who your ancestor voted for, which priest he voted for. And, uh, well, if there was only one candidate, yeah, it's not that interesting. But if there were more, if there were two or three candidates, that could become very interesting. And the details of the story could get spicy. Uh, for example, sometimes the political dimension was attached to the election of a priest. And, for example, half the village would vote for a priest who supported the king, and the other half would vote for a priest who supported Venizelos, um, a Greek politician who was in uh, like conflict with the king back in the 1910s and 20s. Uh, so you can actually reveal family history and local uh, village history as well. But this collection also includes more. Uh, for example, we found photos of churches like that on the on the left or military documents like that on the right. Every time a priest, you know, um, said he would be interesting in, uh, in a position, they would ask him to provide all documentation proving that, you know, he studied somewhere, that he has completed his military service. So you can find lots of information. Now, we did not digitize all of these, we just digitized the voter lists. Um, and, you know, the reason why was because it, there were so many pages and the, the archive, the collection was not uh, archived properly. And in fact, I, I think I'm going to Sparta next summer again, this time not to digitize, but to contribute to the preservation of the, of the archive. And I'm going to donate some archival material to the metropolis so that they can um, preserve their records uh, in the best uh, possible way. Oh, well, <laughs> while I was working in Sparta, I also had time to take a break. On the right, you can see uh, Yemista uh, stuffed uh, pepper and tomato cooked and brought to me by the, the bishop's sister, Anna, who also brought me some olives and a uh, toast. So I was super happy at the metropolis and I, and I had a great time as usual. While I was in Sparta, we also launched a new platform, Yaya and Me. The idea behind this platform is to help people reconnect with their family history, especially, especially young people, but not through the conventional um, genealogical way, but more in a historical way. So our goal is to publish family history related articles, which are broadly relevant. And I have to thank uh, our intern at Greek Ancestry Alexandra Kiritsi, who writes all those uh, beautiful articles and, uh, and has shared her inspiration and enthusiasm uh, with us. And we also keep a, uh, an Instagram account for Yaya and me, as well as for Greek Ancestry. So if you want to be notified about new posts uh, and stuff, just follow us there. Uh, after my trip to Sparta, I was hoping I was going to take some rest, but rest was not uh, what was meant for Greg this summer. Um, at the end of June, I was asked to give uh, two presentations for my heritage together with my friend Carol Kosakos Petranik. The uh, presentations were about the Greek records recently published on my heritage. I'm not going to, to delve into this, but if you're interested in finding out more about those records, and especially the Sparta marriages 
um, collection, I would advise you to to watch those uh, webinars. I think they are uh, my heritage's website or blog. Then on July 1st, we published 20,000 new records for Haya, Patras and Arcadia. Uh, we had published 30,000 records back in June 1st and we published 45,000 records on August 1st. The August uh, records were those that were the Paris photo lists and the, my indexing team worked on that project throughout July and they did a great job, uh, you know, considering the amount of records. On September 1st, we published 19,000 records for Messinia and Ilia. Most of them are for Messinia and about 1,000 are for Ilia, but they are interesting because they are old photo lists. In July and August, I gave some more um, presentations. On August 3rd, uh, I gave a presentation for Greeks in South America. It was organized by a friend of mine in Argentina. It was very uh, interesting and, you know, uh, it was nice because there were some people from my village watching uh, from Argentina, so that was a great opportunity to, you know, to get to know them and connect with them. Uh, on August 21st, the Palaconian Brotherhood of Victoria and Melbourne uh, in Australia, they organized a Laconian Ancestry lecture and I presented. That was also interesting and I highly recommend if you have, you know, family um, roots in Laconia, in Sparta, I would highly recommend you to watch this uh, webinar. It is available both on the Palaconian Brotherhood's Facebook page, but also on my YouTube, on Greek Ancestry's YouTube channel. And uh, another very interesting um, virtual event was uh, a panel discussion we had about Hellenic genealogy tourism and the revolution of 1821. It was organized by EMCA um, and Lukatsus, uh, Emka's president can be seen uh, at the top left. I'm next to him, George Stryker Kilman of the Helen Genealogy Geek, uh, Stathis Kefalidis, governor of AHEPA in Greece, Peter Vlitas, uh, who's he, he's cropped off here. I, it, that was not on purpose. Um, he's a leader in tourism and he's based in um, New York. And uh, bottom right, you can see or barely see uh, the Greek Minister of Tourism, Haris Theoharis, who also joined the panel. The discussion was really interesting and again, uh, it's worth, you know, a watch. Finally, after uh, my uh, August 21st presentation, I had some time to, to relax and work on my own family history. Here you can see some documents I have collected throughout the years, photos. Uh, in the middle, it's my great-grandfather's diploma from the University of Athens, 1931. And on the left, there is uh, a re the release paper of my other great-grandfather, who was um, arrested by the Italians in 1941 during resistance. And he was in prison in Patras uh, for two years, till 1943. Now, when I was younger and I was working on the Contos family line, um, I was stuck at some point because, you know, I had found some information, but there, then there was this old photo list, handwritten, not nicely organized. The villages were not in the right order, so the same village would come, uh, would appear again and again in the photo list, and that was you know, um, uh, difficult. And so, you know, many pages, difficult pages. So I had just quit. Uh, and well, I did not expect this, but when we published the, the Messinia records on September 1st, I thought I should give it one more chance, give my family history research one more chance and you know i just 
went to the website uh, under search Messinia. I typed contos and I found my great 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 grandfather <laughs> and I was surprised because you know I thought that my own database my own website would never be useful to me because you know I have some experience I can read I can uh, speak Greek so I did not think it would be helpful for me but it proved to be and I realized then how helpful all these databases are because they are fast you know yeah they save you time you can play with spellings you can like they're so so helpful they facilitate your research even if you're not an amateur researcher so okay I added this uh, person of my family tree he was born around 1814 but I also added these notes on the side you can see them top right what are these they are full source citations and I really think it's important to you know to address why they are very very important first of all every time you get some information you know you find it you are sent some information you want to make sure that it is valid right if there is no citation, if you don't know who created the record, when, why, how, where it is stored, all of that, the source might not be reliable. Actually, you don't even know the source, right? Um, in fact, let me tell you this, some time ago, a year or two, I was sent some records, the actual records, uh, but I was not given the source citations. I was not told what the records are, you know, all the questions I raised before, who created them, why, how, all that. And believe it or not, uh, although the information was interesting, I did not find it reliable. I did not use it. Information without a source cannot be trusted. And then think about it in another way. In the future, in a decade, or less or more, someone might want to build on your own research. How are they going to know that your information is accurate? If you provide them with citations, you will save them time and you will create a very safe and concrete base, base for them to, to build on your work. Because if they find some other records, which include contradictory information compared to what you already have, you know, how are they going to know which information is the correct one? And if you don't give them a citation, they will not trust you. Another reason why they are important. In our webinars back in uh, spring and June, we were discussing how important it is to know the history behind a record, the context within a record within which a record was created. This context, this story, is part of your own family history. Let's, for, for example, uh, let's take a look at those sort of, uh, source uh, citations I have here. Uh, 1844 Voto List, Municipality of Dorio, Dorio Municipality. Okay, so it's a voter list, so we're talking about elections. My ancestor voted. When was that? 1844. Oh, by the way, 1844 was the first uh, was when the first elections took place in Greece. Thorium municipality. Oh, so Greece uh, in the administration there is a unit called municipality, and it should be important, right? And the voter lists were created by municipality, okay? And Thorio was. The, the village where this guy was born. So uh, it has the same name with the municipality. It was its capital. So this guy lived in a significant, a locally significant village. So this allows you to get some glimpses, you know, small but important, into um, people's lives and how people uh, perceived things. And finally, when you cite a source, you contribute to its preservation. 
Okay, every time you cite a source, you leave a trace that this source, you know, you've seen it, it existed at some point, right? In the future, this source might not exist anymore, but your citation will remind people that this source existed. And this is very important. But also, let's say you're using a source which is not very well known. If you provide a citation and someone else sees your work, they will know, they will get familiar with this source, right? So you drag the source out of its uh, darkness and you make it public. And then people might be interested, you know, in preserving it, digitizing it, whatever. See what happened in Sparta. We went there, we used, uh, and we, we saw and used material we did not know of. And here we are, we have digitized so much, and we are going back this summer to, to actually preserve the record with new archival material, boxes, paper, you know. So it's really important to cite your sources. And, well, summer uh, came to an end, unfortunately, and September uh, is here, and that meant uh, more work <laughs> for Gregory. Um, so we made some updates on the website, and I think this is something you will be interested in. So first of all, our searches algorithm got more flexible. So now you can search not by not only by full word but also by characters. Let's say, let's say, let, let me give you an example. So you are looking for the Contoyanus family, okay, but you don't know how to spell Contoyanus. Is it with a K or with a C? It's with a K. But let's say you don't know. Right? or how to spell Yanis. The only characters you are certain about are onto, O-N-T-O, okay? So if you type just that in the search engine, you will get all surnames in that database, which include those characters in that order. And this is super helpful. I, like here I typed onto, and here it is, Conto Yanis, and others, right? But in this way, you can find what you're looking for, even if you are missing the correct spelling or whatever. Secondly, on Saturday, uh, it was a 26th, uh, right? Today is a 27th. So on Saturday, we added a new All Greece generic search engine. So till now, when you visit our website, you could search by prefecture. You would select the prefecture of Greece your family came from, and then you would type their surname or village, you know, to find them. Now we added this generic database. Why did we do it, and why did we do it now? Um, till now, we did not want to do it because we wanted to protect the user from getting confused. Imagine you are looking for, let's say, the Contos family, my family, in a generic database. Okay, you type Contos and you get hundreds of results from many different areas of Greece. You do, know, know, you do not know exactly where these areas are, so you don't know, you know how likely it is that all these different families are actually related. You know, you will get confused, and we've seen that. So till now, we were thinking, you know, avoid an all search database, an all Greece search database. Now, however, we added this one. The prefectures are still there, but we added an all Greece engine in order to help those who do not know where their family came from. They know they were from Greece. They know their surname, but they don't know the village or the specific area. So using the all Greece search engine, they will be able to find their family throughout all the areas we have records for. And, well, we have records, I guess, for at least half of the country at the moment, and many, many more areas will be added soon. So it is a very uh, helpful and uh, strong 
uh, tool. And in case you have any questions, we added a live support chat. There is a little red button um, here at the bottom of every page on our website. So if you just click there and a chat box opens up and you know you type your email and your question and if we are available we will answer right there you know right then um well it's still uh working on a pilot basis um and the the times are uh adjusted to when we are available here in greece uh, so for the U.S. that's 4 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time and for Australia it's 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. Melbourne Time. Uh, but the good news is even if we are not available at the moment, you can still leave your question and we will see it and you will get an answer on the next day. And in this way, the reason we uh, added this tool was to encourage users to ask more questions no is it about surnames uh spellings areas uh, cost um types of records anything anything you know everything you need help with you can ask uh, and we will be right there and so more questions and faster answers because if we are available you will get your answer your question answered right away Uh, this is it for today. Uh, well, thank you. And in case you have any questions, uh, you now know uh, where to find us. Uh, you can either uh, comment on YouTube and Facebook or contact us through the website, either um, through the email uh, box or using the new uh, live support chat tool. Thank you. Ça se fera Have a great day.